Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with Valley PBS. Today we are chatting with Ashley Swearingen, President and CEO of the Central Valley Community Foundation. Ashley has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. Thank you, Ashley, for joining us today. My pleasure. So this is a really fascinating, fascinating conversation in that your career arc has uh, really spanned a whole range of different activities. Talk a little bit about the Central Valley Community Foundation, but let's get into how you got to this point in your career where you're leading the Community Foundation. Well, sure, thank you. It's been a fun journey for me. I'm about 20 years into community and economic development work in the Central San Joaquin Valley. Uh, started for me back in 1998. The economy was booming. The dot-com world was first becoming it a reality. It was never going to end. It was never going to end, and yet those of us in the San Joaquin Valley were experiencing chronically high levels of unemployment, um, the highest concentration of poverty of any other large city and region in the country, and we were seeing one statistic after another that was all pointing to the fact that we were not engaging, we were not prepared to compete in this knowledge-based new economy. And so um, there was a big movement underway to create a, a nonprofit business incubator. Uh, I jumped ship from my private sector work and went to lead that. And that really became for me the first step into what's now been about 20 years of, of community development work. And I find myself today at the Central Valley Community Foundation after having served eight years as mayor of the city of Fresno. And um, it, was, it was such, a logical next step for the work that uh, my team and I had done at City Hall. Um, so much underway, so much happened in terms of public policy and infrastructure and all the things that local government needs to do to really prepare its region for investment. So I knew the next big thing for this region is that we have to see large sums of financial investment into the area. We're shovel ready. We're right on the cusp of potentially breaking through and breaking free from decades of disinvestment and neglect. So I thought to myself, I need to be somewhere where I can legitimately um, recruit investors, whether they be additional um, public partners or they're you know, private philan philanthropic givers, national level, state level, local. I need to be in a place where I can help orchestrate financial investment in the San Joaquin Valley. And uh, right at that same time, the Central Valley Community Foundation was looking for someone to head up the organization. And so everything fell into place. And here I am now, almost two years later. And you had gone from uh, an understanding of the politics of being a mayor and serving a municipality uh, right into continuing that work, but in a different context. True. It, it, it really, when I look back on um, where we are as a city in Fresno and where we are as a region, um, it makes perfect sense to me that, uh, that, that I would be involved with an amazing team, a board of directors, an entire community of people at the Community Foundation that are all saying, now is our time. The Central Valley has been overlooked, and frankly, you know, that's our fault in our region. We are the ones who should be letting the world know about the amazing things that are happening here, but also the challenges and being very articulate about the needs we have and trying to align those needs with people who can help us resolve them. And so the fact that we haven't seen that kind of investment in this region, that's on us. And we at the Community Foundation are taking responsibility to change that and to raise our hands and to put forward um, actionable, investable plans for um, partner funders to really see significant change in the Central Valley. Talk a little bit about um, uh, the, the agricultural uh, side of the economy, the uh, oil and gas side of the economy, and, and uh, where do you think this is heading in the future? Well, um, it's a great question. And, um, you know, I think oftentimes we have misrepresented um, to the outside world that, um, that, that, that our economy is entirely one that's based on production ag. And when you peel back the layers and look at what's going on with food and innovation, of course, production ag is the anchor, the pillar of the economy. But there are so many ways in which that investment in production ag turns over in our region and in our economy. Um, it's one of the reasons why we in the Fresno area started the Fresno Food Expo, which today is the California Food Expo an annual trade show to um, put on display all the finished food products that are also being manufactured here and all the creativity that's going into a lot of early stage companies and 
uh, and entrepreneurial ventures that we're seeing in the food space. So we're seizing um, our, our rightful place in the world as a leader in production ag and saying, but let's do more with that. Let's think about biotech that spins off of it. Let's think about ag tech. Let's think about all sort of creative end user experiences that we can facilitate as the food capital of the world. So that's certainly a pillar for us and I think it will continue to be in the future. Um, but on top of that, in the central San Joaquin Valley, you know, we're the people capital of a major region in California um, that collectively is three and a half million people, 25,000 square miles, and right in the middle of it is actually a fairly dense urban center, and that is the city of Fresno. So all of the services that go along with being the people capital of the region are headquartered here, whether they be education, government, finance, insurance, things like that. Um, so that's a big part of our economy as well. Having said that, um, we know that we need a lot more export-oriented jobs in this region. We have a, a small but growing tech industry here that uh, is being put on display in our downtown with Bitwise Industries and the hundreds of companies that are flocking, small companies that are flocking to be a part of this tech, uh, this tech scene that's happening in downtown Fresno. Um, but even on top of that, we need literally tens of thousands of additional jobs uh, that, are, that are exporting products and services outside the region, bringing new dollars to this area, and then allowing those dollars to be turned over and circulated um, throughout our local economy. So there are big efforts underway uh, to really try to move that needle, and um, I'm cautiously optimistic that we're close to getting our breakthrough on, uh, on economic development in this region. So talk about the range of programs that you provide and how you structure those programs and balance those resources. Sure. And probably the best way to think about our work at the Community Foundation is, um, is we are a collection of people, our staff, our board, our donors, who are aiming at big things for the Central San Joaquin Valley. We ourselves aren't service providers, but we are people who are holders of vision. We have some resources we can put behind that vision, and then we're committed to finding additional resources to back actionable, fundable plans that actually create systems change in four key areas. The first that we've already been talking about quite a bit, jobs and in an inclusive economy, um, really making sure that our economy grows, number one and number two, and in a manner that actually creates opportunity for the people of this region and doesn't bypass them yet again. Um, number two, education, workforce development, and, and skills, and you're right, that's two sides of the same coin. Uh, employers that have demand for a skilled workforce and then a skilled workforce that meets that demand, so those two things go hand in hand. The third thing for us is, uh, is really going after revitalization of some of our distressed neighborhoods. Um, we see that very profoundly in Fresno, for example, but other parts of the valley as well, um, as our land use patterns really just kind of perpetuated a, a, a sprawling landscape and took out a lot of production ag in the process. We have um, many, many neighborhoods that have been left behind, and we know today the kids who are born in impoverished neighborhoods in Fresno have about a 7% chance of getting out of those, that, that status of poverty by the time they're middle-aged. So, and that sprawl has so many different uh, consequences. Infrastructure, just to keep the water correct. running and, the, and gas running, and then uh, policing those, those neighborhoods and keeping the sidewalks uh, and, and the streets uh, um, in, in reasonable shape. It just, it just disperses the resources that you have. It's true. We learned that lesson the hard way during the Great Recession and um, coming off of a housing boom in one of the cities and regions that participated most aggressively during the early 2000s and then all of a sudden you know that tide was gone and we were looking at oh my goodness how do we service 110 square mile city with the resources that we have so that really revealed um, sort of some flaws in our thinking and our policy that we've, we've since sought to change and to correct um, so that's a big fo focal point for us too is place-based work certainly in urban Fresno and in partner cities around the valley um, and then lastly, quality of life, uh, air, water, parks, open space, arts, access to arts, those sorts of things um, are also uh, issues that we're working hard at. And, you know, our formula is we believe that if, collect if, um, if collaboratives of civic leaders come together around each of those areas, they work together to figure out how we're actually going to move the needle on these big, big things for this region, a good solid plan will absolutely attract financial resources and the reason why we have not seen the type of financial investment in this area that we now are calling for 
we think at the Community Foundation is because we don't think we've been prepared. We don't think we've done the work to get shovel ready. And so at the Community Foundation, we support our nonprofit partners, our public agency partners, and really coming to the table, figuring out what those plans need to look like. And then our board and staff have said, we'll take responsibility figuring out how to pay for it, but you gotta get your community shovel ready. And with that, we have something to go to a broad range of investors to try to get the financial backing in place. Well, it seems what you're doing is you're trying to bring people together to form a consensus to change the rules and the systems and the workflows and the circumstances so that instead of having the wealth of this region extracted and exported, either exported into companies who are able to generate profit from the labor and the, the, uh, the products that are produced here, um, exported into the world who are also able to take those products and, and to create new products, to have that reinvest and enliven and make more wealthy this region not to take away anything from anyone else, but to also leave something here so that this region can thrive and this region can be a part of California that is um, as prosperous as it is valuable. I think that's a good assessment. And um, what is so motivating to us in the Central Valley right now is um, knowing that we really are the undefined part of California's future. Um, you can look at virtually every other major region in California and say, oh, I know what it's going to look like 50 years that's, from now. That's, that, that's true, isn't it? You, ca you can't say that about the Central Valley. So we are really at this pivotal point in history. And um, what I can say is, uh, is that, that the last 50 years can't and shouldn't define our next 50 years. So there's this, this feeling of there's a frontier here, that we have a chance to get things right. Um, there is a bit of a clean slate, certainly many challenges that we have to overcome, but there's also a freedom and an entrepreneurship to create the future that we want. Then you add to that the fact that this is, <laughs> this is a really young region, like City of Fresno, for example, 59% of the residents in this city are under the age of 35. So just imagine for a minute, what, what all, I mean, we have a disproportionate share of the young people in California are here. You know, so we really feel like all eyes should be on this place, but not just the eyes, the hands, the hearts, the, the support, the help. Like th this really is California's future one way or the other. And, you know, we certainly um, believe it's going to be a bright future, but not without a lot of hard work and a lot of direct investment and support um, for our major systems, our entrepreneurs, um, the civic sector, et cetera. And that investment has to start with us at the local level but certainly we need partners from state, national philanthropy, uh, and public support as well. Well, Ashley Swearingen, thank you so much for sharing the work of the Central Valley Community Foundation, and thank you so much for your insights. Thank you.